Hi Year 5, it's Mrs Inwards here. Happy New Year, hope you all had a good Christmas. Bit of a different start to the year, isn't it? Um, but we will do the best we can. So, maths for today. We are looking at multi-step problems. Okay, now, multi-step problems. If I can now change the slide, there we go. A multi-step problem is where you use more than one operation. Now, yesterday, in your lesson with Miss Major, hopefully you practised your addition, subtraction, multiplication and division so that you have familiarised yourself with the methods again. OK, you are going to be using those operations today in your multi-step problems. Um, multi-step problems are using usually two or three of the operations. OK, so you might have a question where you're doing addition and multiplication or a question with subtraction and addition. You have to work out which operations you need to use, though. OK, so what we're going to do now is have a couple of practice questions so that you can get more familiar with um, how to do it. OK, so in a minute, when um, I tell you to pause the video you can get a pen and a paper to do it all right but get that in a minute let's have a look, look at the question together Jacob received 25 pounds and 90 pence for his birthday he spent eight pound 99 on a book and seven pound 50 on a computer game how much has he got left okay so Obviously, reading the question very carefully is important. You then need to identify the important information. Now, you're used to doing these from when you've done various word problems before. OK, identify all of the important information, not just the numbers. OK, the words will give you clues as to which operation you need to use. OK, um, Remember, it is a multi-step problem, so you will need to do more than one calculation. OK, I'll give you a clue. It's two calculations that are needed. All right. Um, what I want you to do now is to go and get a pencil and paper. And just like when we're in the lesson and we use a whiteboard and pen, on the bit of paper, you're just going to roughly write down the um, the workings out that you need to do to work out how much he has got left. That is the question. OK, um, so if you now pause it and then when you have done all of your workings out, you can continue to press play and we will go through the answer. OK, good luck. OK, so hopefully you've got an answer now. Um, let's go through what you did. So identifying the important information now. Jacob starts off with £25.90. That is an important amount of information. All right. He then spent, which means we are taking away £8.99 on a book and £7.50 on a computer game. So again, we're taking that away. All right. That was the clue in the question. So then how much has he got left over? All right. If we move on to the next slide. You can see here, I've underlined the important information just like you would usually do in any word problem. OK, there are two, two different ways that you could have worked this out. Both will end up with the correct answer. In some problems that you will do, there will only be one method to work out. It just so happens that there are two different ways to do this one. OK, what you could have done to start with is added together both of the amounts that he spent. So the eight ninety nine on a book and the seven pound fifty on a computer game, which total sixteen pounds and forty nine. You could have then taken that amount that he spent away from that twenty five pound ninety that he started with, and that will leave you with the nine pound forty one, which is the answer. How much he's got left? Or you could have taken them away separately. So if you look at the bottom method, you start with the twenty five pound ninety. Take off the eight ninety nine for the book to start with, and you get sixteen pound ninety one. Then, with that sixteen pound ninety one, you take off the computer game for seven pound fifty, and once again, you will get that total of nine pound forty one. Hopefully, I'm hearing a cheer or a yes because you got the right answer. 
If you didn't, don't worry. I'd like you to read the question again. See if you've used the right methods um, or whether you chose the wrong operations. And that's where you made your mistake. Or did you make your mistakes in doing your adding or subtracting? If you made your mistakes with the actual workings out, try to have another go at the workings out, okay, to see if you make the same mistake again or whether it was just an error the first time, okay? Let's continue and try another problem. Okay, this time. There are 16 girls and 15 boys in a class. They are organised into tables of four. How many tables are needed to sit all of the children? So remember, read the question carefully, identify all of that important information and then decide which operations you think are needed and in which order. Okay, I'm going to read the question one more time before you're going to have another go on your pen and paper. There are 16 girls and 15 boys in a class. They are organised into tables of four. How many tables are needed to sit all of the children? Okay, I'm going to pause it now and you have a go on, the, on your pen and paper. And then once you have done all your workings out, you can press play again. Okay, good luck. Okay, so hopefully you have worked out how many tables are needed to sit all of the children. Um, so, the important information. There are 16 girls and 15 boys. It doesn't actually matter whether they're girls or boys. What you need to work out to start with is how many children there are actually in the class. Okay, and so that 16 added to the 15 gives us 31 children in the class. Okay, next bit of important information is that they sit in tables of four. Okay, so if those 31 children are each sitting at a table of four, we need to do a division sum, okay, to work out how many tables are needed. Now, I've set it up in the bus stop method, but actually, you probably wouldn't need to for doing um, a, a division sum with such small numbers because this is within your times table still. I have set it out like this and I've done the um, written out the times table at the bottom just because that's the way we would usually do it. But if you can do this mentally, that is absolutely fine, okay? All you would need to write down is that you have done 31 divided by four, okay? As you can see from the times tables that I've written out here, we get seven times four is 28. 8 times 4 is too many, 32. Okay, so 7 times 4 is 28. So it means we have got 7 tables of 4, but then we've got 3 children left over. Now, this is similar to the problems that you did with me before Christmas. We cannot just have 3 children left over and say to them, oh, you have to sit on the floor. Okay, so we have to round it up. Those 3 children will need to sit at a table. It's just not going to be a complete table of four. There will be a spare seat. Okay, so there will be seven complete tables of four and one table with just three children on. But that doesn't matter. It just asks us how many tables are needed to seat all of the children. Therefore, it is eight tables that are needed. We have rounded up our answer. Okay, so if you are doing a division sum, always think to yourself, is this answer acceptable as a remainder or do I need to round it up or down? Okay, just like we did with all of the word problems um, before Christmas. Okay, but these are multi-step problems. So you have done your addition to start with to work out how many children in the class and then you have gone on to do your division. All right, so in all of the questions that you do for yourself in a minute, make sure you have done multi-steps. Okay, using more than one operation, more than one calculation to do. Okay, because that's what makes it the multi-step problems. If you have got any problems whatsoever, you can email us at the Year 5 email, which is written down in your reading record books. Okay, you have now got five think questions and three solve questions to complete. Remember what we've discussed 
read the question carefully, identify all of that key information, not just the numbers, the words that will give you clues as to which operations you need to use. Okay, decide the operations and in which order you need to do them. All right. Um, I have uh, written the questions on um, a sheet and left gaps for you to complete the answers. So you can complete it online or if you would rather print the sheet off, um, you can obviously do that. Um, or you can just write the answers on a bit of paper and then get someone to take a photo and email it back to the year five email so that I can then look at all of your work. Okay, good luck with it all. You can look through this PowerPoint again as well to hopefully pick up some tips if you need them. Okay, thanks year five.